Ferns, like many other plant species, can be found in many locations and environments across the globe. From dry and arid deserts to lush, dense jungles and even the backdrops of many famous movies, ferns have been able to adapt to many different climates. However, ferns are not only interesting because of their diversity and starring roles in popular films. One of the most interesting facts of the fern is its life cycle. Ferns go through what is known as a haplodiplontic life cycle, which is defined as an alternation of generations. This means that ferns, like many other plants, go through a multicellular haploid phase where each of its cells contains only one copy of each chromosome, and a multicellular diploid phase where each of its cells contains two copies of each chromosome. This is unlike humans in the fact that we live our entire lives as diploid structures. However, like humans, a fern has to begin its life somewhere. Ferns begin life as a spore. That spore grows into the gametophyte or the large leafy structure close to the ground, similar to this. At this point in its life cycle, the fern is haploid and contains only one copy of each chromosome. As the fern matures, it begins to produce gametes. Male gametes are called sperm and female gametes are called eggs. The sperm are produced in the antheridia portion and the eggs are produced in the archegonia. As the gametes mature, the fern prepares to release the male gametes which must swim in water to meet the antheridia and fertilize the egg. If this occurs, the fertilized egg will grow into a sporophyte. The sporophyte, which is what most people would identify as a fern, is the diploid phase of a fern's life cycle. In this diploid phase, the fern creates structures known as sporangium on the underside of its leaves. The sporangium are where the fern produces haploid spores through the process known as meiosis. Once the spores are fully mature, they are released from the sporangium and dispersed throughout the environment, and the life cycle of a fern begins again as a haploid structure. Hi, I'm Jessica, and today we are learning how to grow ferns from a spore on an auger plate. To begin growing our ferns, Jessica is going to take fern spores suspended in water and place them on an auger plate that has been previously prepared. Now we have to place the auger plate under the grow light so that when the spores are ready, they can begin the process of photosynthesis. All right, so we need to water the auger plates um, every three days to prevent the drying out of the auger medium. And we need to make sure to use distilled water so as not to uh, contaminate the auger plate with algae. And if you do it all right, your auger plate should look like this in about three weeks. 